Hello, everyone. This is Winston from Texas Security King Lab. It's a pleasure to present a session in the Geneva All Member Meeting. So, King Lab has conducted security tests on over 30 vehicles during the past five years, including the public security research as well as the commercial Pentax project projects. So, today we're going to share the common risks and issues that OEMs are facing as well as the recommended protection practice from our perspective. So this picture list illustrates the common attack surfaces from a full connected vehicle. Uh, the left part from, oh, you can see the onboard side. The picture we have been using for several years, the architecture may have changed, but the key components are still the same. Uh, first is the infotainment system. Uh, or can be called the so-called head unit. It's used, it, it's considered as the most vulnerable um, attack entry of a vehicle due to its rich, uh, rich features and rich services, including the Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, or USB, et cetera. It in interacts with, uh, with the passengers, which means that there are many ways to get in. Uh, for this infotainment, it leveraged the T-Box, the other component is T-Box is used to connect to the uh, backend to download the content and download the firmware and then distribute it uh, to, the, to, to, to other components. So in this, in this part, it means that the vehicle itself can be considered, or considered as a endpoint of the uh, connected vehicle network. So in our case, we do see that we can leverage uh, one T-box, uh, leverage one vehicle. If the T-box is compromised, we can leverage one vehicle to connect to the backend and then to control other vehicles. So that's the importance of T-box. And both the infotainment system and T-box are connected to gateway. Gateway, of course, it means to, um, to isolate networks between different domains. So to below that, there are multiple CAN buses. So, if a gateway is compromised, the domain isolation will be break or will be broken. So, uh, for example, we do have cases that where, where we can send malicious diagnostic, diagnostic messages from InfoCAN to bypass the network isolation of gateway and then send uh, messages to the other, other CANs, for example, like PD CAN, the Chases CAN, the Body CAN, et cetera. And other, uh, other new features like the ADAS and V2X, these technologies are becoming more and more popular. So on the other hand, uh, it introduces most, uh, also introduces new attack vectors, which we will show uh, later of our one of our research. The right side is the traditional um, web security, so-called web security. There's a mobile app that's connected to the uh, backend service and uh, backend and then to the vehicle to control the vehicle to perform some remote control features like, like open, the tr open the trunk, open the window, uh, or the near range through the Bluetooth keys or the NFC keys to unlock the door, uh, unlock the vehicle's door. So in this, in this case, we see, we see issues where the backend authentication is not implemented. For example, we can use one app to break the authentication and to access other vehicles, uh, other users' vehicles' data, or even control other uh, other users' vehicle. And also, we do see, see several um, scenarios coming. Uh, one is the, for example, the uh, OT update, and another very hot topic recent uh, recently is the IDS uh, or the so-called vehicle uh, vehicle security operation center. So this kind of technology is used, introduced to improve the security of the vehicle. For example, use IDS to detect, uh, to detect an attack and also use uh, leverage OTA to update the fix, uh, deploy the fix quickly. However, on the other hand, if the security of the, these features or the security of OTA or the security of IDS is not uh, correctly implemented, it can become more dangerous. We can leverage this channel to flash our own firmware, to, to flash the malicious firmware, or to send the malicious, malicious message, uh, commands to manipulate the vehicle. So as you can see that the security of a connected vehicle is never 
it's never a one, one person job or even a one team job. It has to leverage multiple different teams. It has to leverage IT, the r and It has to leverage the suppliers. It needs the holistic view to protect the entire uh, connected vehicle uh, security. So here gives a, a detail, a real case on if the attack vectors can be leveraged, how the attack vectors can be leveraged and how we can achieve the whole uh, remote attack chain. This is the well-known uh, Tesla research we have done in 2016. So basically uh, the architecture here is uh, simplified. We just list all the components we focus on. Uh, the CID is a Linux system is used for infotainment as well as the T-Box to connect to the backward. Uh, it's a Linux system and there's a backhead, uh, backhead browser to, to, to display the info. And inside the vehicle, it connects to the, uh, to the other components like IC, gateway and Wi-Fi through uh, ethernet. And we focus on gateway, which is the Arto system. And below gateway, we focus on two CAN buses, uh, the body CAN and the chain CAN buses. So here's how the attack vectors looks like. So first, uh, Tesla has a, has this built-in uh, Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi profile for Tesla cars to auto connect it to the uh, dealership to 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 download or to for maintenance. But this gives us window. We can set up a malicious hotspot hotspot to trigger the Tesla car to connect it uh, to connect, and then we can get into the uh, Tesla network. And in 2016, we leveraged the wacky browser of the, uh, of the CID is way out of date. And we leverage, which means that there are several uh, vulnerabilities can be used. We leverage two uh, CVEs we exploit to gain the code execution ability of the browser. And then we look, take a look into the Linux kernel. Uh, at that point, the kernel itself is also out of date, which means that we leverage the several the ability to achieve the privilege escalation to disable the APP armor. And at this point, we, get, we gain the Linux root shell of the CID. And that, that's in a video, we replace the display with our logo. This is kind of our tradition. So to, to prove that we have compromised the, the head in it. Then we can take a look at the gateway. In 2016, um, at that time, Tesla already implemented the full vehicle uh, OT update, uh, which is pretty impressive. But uh, at that point, the signature mechanism is not implemented, which means that we can easily bypass the code integrity check and to patch our own firmware, malicious firmware of the gateway. The left part, the left part is just easy, so we can just uh, compose the malicious CAN messages and send through uh, gateway and then to perform the impact to the vehicle. So we were able to, by combining all these, uh, all these vulnerabilities, we were able to achieve remotely compromise the, compromise the CID then to the gateway and then send CAN, CAN messages to achieve, for example, in both a uh, parking mode or driving mode to open a window, unlock a car, and fold a mirror, or even open a trunk, or even make a car break, break in, the, uh, in the driving mode. So as you can see in 2016, that time most, mo it's mostly design issues. Um, the norm and abilities were out of date or no signature mechanism. After report this, uh, these issues, Tesla fixed them quickly to, uh, deploy the patch and add the signature mechanism. And then in 2016, 2017, uh, one year later, we make the exploit again. So what happened? For the browser, first of all, uh, it's the browser. The previously reported vulnerabilities has been fixed. However, however, the back browser still has the state. So we leverage some new series to get the uh, code execution again. For the kernel side, uh, in 2017, uh, the kernel version is already pretty new, is up to date. But through deep analysis, we found a zero day vulnerability to achieve the previous escalation to gain the root control again. And for the gateway, 
So uh, after we import that Tesla already uh, implemented the signature mechanism very quickly. But however, we found that the, implement, uh, the implementation has some logic flaws, which means that the signature verification can be bypassed. So we bypass the signature verification and then we flash our firmware again. So then we make the Howard chain uh, available again. And also in 2017, we, what is very interesting to us is that it has the, introduced the autopilot, uh, autopilot module. So we took a look at, uh, at the APE module. So through the, of course, uh, through the deep analysis of the code logic, we eventually by leveraging one uh, high privilege process by combining a command, this command is very interested. You can see that a command is called the M3 factory deploy. So which we suspect to be the, to be the function that in the model three factory version, but hasn't been removed on the production version. So by leveraging these vulnerabilities, we were able to remotely get the root privilege of the ADAS controller system. Then we took a look at the ADAS system. So you can see that in 2017, the design issues has been uh, somehow fixed and uh, the other part remains uh, leading to the implementations. The code implementations is not secure enough for us to, uh, so that we can fail some security flaws and to leverage. But of course, uh, to find these implementation issues very, uh, need very high expertise. So to, to, to achieve this attack, they require a very high expertise. And like the 2016s, uh, it's just uh, non CVEs can be easily exploited. Then we take a look at the, the AP module and we took a look at the ADAS. Um, and we found to we considered uh, for the ADAS system, there are two attack vectors. So first part is the ADAS domain controller in Tesla is the uh, autopilot ACU. Not only the autopilot ACU, but for the domain centralized or even the cross domain centralized uh, E architecture, we consider the domain controller to be the top the system security of the domain controller itself is top priority because the component is quite vital that is connected to different, um, different important uh, canvases, important ACUs. If that is compromised, we can leverage this component to, 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 to perform very dangerous work. So in the video, we show that we, can, we were able to um, controlling, uh, control Tesla's steering system, which is the gamepad. Another part is the, um, another vector is the AI algorithm. So as a new technology in our research, because Tesla leveraged uh, machine learning, the neural network to, uh, for, uh, for ADAS, ADAS decision-making. For example, that we, we were able to generate a adversary example to trigger the, uh, trigger the AI algorithm to make it the wrong decision. For example, we were able to trick them to think it's current a raining version uh, and to turn on the turn on the windshield, and also we were able to put some, some stickers stickers on the road to make the make the Tesla car to decide to to, to think this to consider this as a new uh, as a new new lane to trigger its lane recognition system to turn to the opposite road. Opposite, uh, opposite the lane. So for ADAS, for ADAS, for V2X, we think that the domain controller security is vital. And also for the AI algorithm or the uh, algorithm security, this is also new to the OEMs and also it's new to the attackers. So in addition to Tesla, we, as I mentioned, we conducted, conducted uh, security test on over 30 vehicles. So here we generate a table. Here list all the vulnerabilities we found on the uh, onboard site. So we categorize, categorize this by the different uh, categories like system security, development security, network, permissions and applications. And also we found the count, uh, we found the cost of the Cost of the vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities can be 
divided into several parts, like the security concept, like system control, no means, or is the logic, logic flaw, is the implementation, implementation issues. And here we found several, um, nearly half of the vulnerabilities are high risk or even critical risks that it can cause very dangerous impact. So here are some, some insights. So first of all, we see that the security concept and known CVE risks is over, uh, has contributed over 60%. In addition to the non CVEs, this is very easy to understanding that we found several security concepts, security options not enabled. For example, for Linux and for Android system, there are some that SE Linux or Secure Boot. This kind of system booting features is not enabled. For example, if a secure boot, we see we, we see a lot of cases that uh, secure boot secure boot is not implement, uh, implement so that when the backdoor is permanent, even even a system restart, the backdoor is still there. This can be very dangerous, and also the uh, access control. Uh, we see a lot of lot of cases where the Developers developed the user applications. It's just run. It's just running uh, in their system or in the root permission, which means that as long as we compromise the app, we don't even need to bypass the SE Linux. We don't need even to bypass to leverage the kernel exploit. We already get the root shell. So this is another thing we have seen, and also of course the weak password. We see many, many. Um, had unit or T-box that use the weak password or even no password. So we see that this kind of security concept, when we're talking to, uh, when we're talking to, when we report this vulnerabilities to the OEMs, the reason why uh, it's there is because there's no requirements. There's no requirements to the, uh, to the suppliers, to the de developers. So which resulted in that this kind of security risks can be easily exploited. Another part, another trend we see is that more and more, uh, in addition to the safety concerns, we see more and more privacy and finance impact uh, to the vehicle. For example, like now, a vehicle, the connected vehicles has introduced several features, for example, uh, like the uh, in-vehicle uh, voice assistant or the DMS. So we do see uh, we we see cases that where the microphone or where the cam uh, a camera can be compromised to do the sniffering of the passengers. This can cause very high private issues to the uh, to, to to the customer impact to the customer. And also we see several features like the feature on demand. It's a very popular chain that um, customers can choose uh, to purchase specific features for a time of period. For example, we can, pay, we can pay for the navigation or we can pay for the part of music or for the video content for a specific time, for one day, for one week, one week et cetera. So this has introduced, uh, has introduced more profit to the OEM. But however, um, if the security of these controls is compromised, it will benefit the black market to open these features just for free. So, which means that new scenarios has introduced more uh, new risks. And last, we see by combination uh, of multiple vulnerabilities, which are already, uh, already demoed in the Tesla research, by combining different individual uh, vulnerabilities, we were able to perform the full attack chains or even remote attack chains, which means that we will not only to affect one vehicle, we can, uh, attackers can leverage on the to attack, but uh, to control all the different vehicles. So this is another trend of our scene. So how, how to, so now uh, we talk about the uh, security issues, the common security risks. So how to fix them, how to, uh, how to do that? So from the technical part, we think long live the security defaults. As I mentioned, the security default not only to PC mobile world, not only to automobile world, we think all the, every, uh, when 
uh, when the new technology is coming, the security defaults never ends. For example, the least privilege principle, how to ensure that ensure that average application, every service can only access required resources. This will reduce the attack vector, reduce the impact. And also the security defaults. For the Linux system and Android system itself is, is already at a very high secure level. So we don't need to worry about our, worry that about our um, mobile phone or our PC being uh, compromised, is easily compromised. That's thanks to the system building security options like AC Linux, like secure boot, et cetera. So to enable that and to correctly configure that to the uh, onboard system, to the uh, domain controllers, that can increase the domain controller security to a very high level. And also the reduce attack surfaces to disable the unnecessary exposed APIs or remove the unnecessary components. And also the in-depth in defense to implement security method on each level from network level, from application level, from the kernel level to reduce attackers uh, ROI return of investment. So all these security defaults are very easily implemented. It doesn't introduce any introduce that much uh, cost to the OEM, unlike the hardware model, unlike, the, uh, unlike some, you, you don't have to put each of the hardware model on each car, which in, in, in introduced the cost. For the system protection, it's a one-time thing. Once this has been implemented, the onboard security can already uh, significantly introduced. So how to do that? that because from the process level. So which means that on the requirements, uh, in the requirement phase, you need to do the tower to identify these security requirements. And then on the implement, uh, uh, implement and implementation and also on the verification phase, you need to, you can to validate whether the requirements has been uh, met. And also thanks to the UN regulation, uh, now, the CSMS will become a must server security management system. You need to consider security on each part of the software of the vehicle development life cycle. You need to consider the uh, supplier security management. And this is from the process level. And if you are interested, you can refer our pre uh, the Geneva's private sessions talking about uh, CSMS. So here are some key takeaways uh, from the personnel level. Uh, three or four years ago, when we're talking to OEMs, we still need to do the education to let them know that, okay, why, why security is important, why cybersecurity can cause impact issues, you need to worry about that. But from recent years, uh, especially from last year, we do need to do that education again, because thanks to the regulation and thanks to uh, the industry education is already at that at a level where all the OEMs already knew that security, cyber security is important. So now the question is how to do that. So we are seeing uh, OEMs setting up their uh, ad hoc team, uh, unique security team to in charge of the vehicle security and to uh, to 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 do the tower of their next generation of e, uh, e architecture, e platform. This is a very good thing. So the, eventually it will be security is everyone's responsibility. We have to say that for this vision is not on the internet world is not implemented yet. So it's a long-term version, a long-term vision. So set up ad hoc team to in charge of, take in charge of security is important. And also let the expert do their job. In requirement phase to Involve, uh, introduce experts to do the tower to set up the security requirements, and also in the verification phase, uh, introduce pen test to verify whether the verify whether the requirement has been met. Just let the expert do their job. And from technical level, uh, as mentioned, the PC mobile world, the security concept, the security solutions is pretty mature. So we just we can just prioritize that by 
the automotive scenarios to implement that into the automotive uh, into the vehicle that can improve the uh, vehicle security to a very high level but i'm not meaning to uh, to implement all the security concepts to, to all the solutions to the automotive uh, automotive world because oems are talking about the uh, uh, cost control so we can we need to prioritize those like the security concept that those system uh, system security baseline uh, configurations that can be easily introduced can be easily implemented that the first priority and then when we consider other new features like which will introduce extra cost like the HSM or the cycle C features and we can consider that later and another part is to implement the appropriate automation tools into the CI process to detect to detect non CVEs to detect the security baselines in CI process to ensure that each version integration didn't introduce new uh, security baseline feature uh, baseline issues and from process level uh, it's all about the shift less security so most of the security risks can be mitigated in the concept phase as long as the security requirements is, uh, has been identified and uh, deployed to the to the supplier but it's also very important to conduct a security test to, val to validate whether the security requirement is met and also to verify whether the implementations has introduced any new risks. So by combining all these technologies and all this process, processing work, uh, we believe that the, we can make the automotive uh, more secure and also you know, very low, uh, with very low cost. That's all for today. Thank you.